All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this out of the way right up front. I did not like Octopath Traveler. And I don't mean it was good, it just wasn't for me. I don't mean it was pretty good, but it didn't really live up to my expectations. No, I actively argue that Octopath Traveler is a really, really poorly made game. It gets carried on its art style and its concept, but unfortunately an art style and a concept cannot possibly carry all of the negative parts of a game like Octopath Traveler. For all of its attempts to break the mold, the story is probably one of the worst stories I've played in an RPG on the Switch. Its battle system really is not as innovative as they want to believe it is, and honestly everything in between battles is pretty bad too. So going into this game, I tried really hard not to get too excited about the trailers and the concepts I was seeing. Even the free-to-play three-chapter demo that they released, I felt a little bit sketchy about, because even though I was seeing some really good things, I was also worried that those good things would not last the entire game. I am happy to say that Triangle Strategy is a much, much better game than Octopath Traveler, but unfortunately, some of the mistakes that Square Onyx made with Octopath do carry over to Triangle. The biggest example of this is probably the story. The story, on the surface, first of all, is not the most original thing. Stop me if you've heard this one before, guys. The main cast of characters come from a house represented by a wolf. Your main character is a black-haired gentleman who is very young and isn't blood-related to the people in his household, but he is still considered a part of their family. On the other side, you have a second house of people, all very beautiful, blonde-haired people, and uh, one of them just so happens to be sort of the runt of the litter, and even though he's charismatic and loved by just about everybody, his own family looks down on him and sees him as a disappointment. Honestly, not the greatest, uh, not the greatest start for the game here, but it's... Like, I'm not going to come out here and accuse Square Onyx of ripping off Game of Thrones, but I will say if they got into a fight and tumbled around with one another, you might have a little bit of trouble figuring out which one to shoot. Outside of the slightly unoriginal premise, uh, the story itself just is not told in a very interesting way. One of the things that bothers me the most about it is an overuse of lore dumps. Essentially, the game will sometimes cut away from the game itself and go to a screen with a map. And on this map screen, a narrator will run through all of the lore that you need to understand what just happened. In fact, some of it is so bad that they will actually go back and recap the last 15 minutes of gameplay and retell it to you. Which is just... I'm, I might not be uh, the sharpest bread in the basket, but I am not that dumb. In fact, at the very beginning of the game, it will immediately explain everything that's going on in the world. Which, on the surface, is fine. But then later on, when something big happens, instead of finding a way to weave it into the narrative through a show-don't-tell sort of format, they flat out just exposition you to death. Uh, one of the examples being uh, one of the early, early chapters in the game. Uh, they explain that something fairly unprecedented is happening with one of the countries shipping something that they don't normally ship. How about instead of a lore dump telling us on a screen that is just a map, why not have some of the characters in the game itself say, Boy, this is a little bit weird. This is a bit unprecedented, mate. There's uh, a shipment coming in from this place that's uh, not normally going to be shipping stuff like this. You don't even need the horrible accent. <laughs> Just have the characters in the game show me what's happening. Don't swap to a picture of a map and straight out tell me what's happening. Not only is it a lot more boring, but it also hinders the pace of the game and it never really goes away. When it comes to the look of the game, uh, it actually doesn't look too bad. It's a fairly decent looking title indeed, but I do have a couple of small uh, little gripes. So first things first, 
There is way too much light exposure in this game. Uh, the models themselves look okay. It's very, very decent sprite work. But there's this huge bloom effect on everybody at essentially all times that makes it look like their heads are lighting up like light bulbs. The environments are about as good as you're going to get with this type of game, and if they would just tone down that light just a, just a little bit, okay? I'm not saying take it away altogether, make just take a little bit of a, the, the light out, it would actually be a really, really nice looking game. Something that I was a little bit iffy about at first is there aren't really any random battles. Like, there are certain story points the game will tell you when you're about to go into a battle, and will tell you what level it recommends your characters be at for that battle, but there's not actually a way to grind yourself up at first. So, when you go into a battle, you always know it's going to be something story-related. You're not going to be fighting random bandits, and you're not going to be fighting random animals like wolves and all of the other things we know that strategy RPGs like to throw at you in between story missions. At first, I was a little bit harsh on this, but honestly, it grew on me a lot. I actually like that they took the random battles and the sort of filler content out of the game so that you can just get to the next story beats as quickly as possible. Now, that being said, that's not to say that there aren't ways to grind in the game. In fact, I actually think Square Onyx did something rather clever here, because you have something called an encampment, which is essentially like a menu, but as a cute little scene within the game. And here, you can actually take on challenge battles, and the challenge battles will always be centered around some kind of concept. One, for example, is just focusing on melee combat. Another one is a pincer attack, sort of splitting your team into two sides and dealing with the fact that you're getting attacked from two fronts. Another one is figuring out how to deal with mages. Going through these battles is not only pretty fun, but also really good for getting a hang of the game and also trying out some new characters or new formations that maybe you'd like to try out in a not-so-serious battle. So if you really do want to grind in this game, there is a way to do it, and it's actually a lot more fun than just running into random wolves and bandits on your way to the next story beat. If I do have one criticism for this system, though, it's that the game really doesn't do enough to tell you about it. So this encampment feature that I'm talking about here, it does come up as a small tutorial screen, but they really don't emphasize everything that you can do in the encampment. You sort of have to figure that out for yourself, which I know some people are going to argue is kind of on you to do anyway. But it would have been nice if maybe they had gone through like a small tutorial thing where they actually took you to the encampment and explained some of these features to you. Okay, but enough about that stuff. Let's go ahead and get into the actual gameplay here. I'm not going to lie to you guys, the gameplay is pretty basic. Um, it's a lot like your Final Fantasy Tactics, your Tactics Ogre, where you are one by one moving your army of people across the screen, and uh, there are back attacks, there are height advantages, there's everything that you're used to from the other games. Now, one change that they made that felt a little bit unnecessary is that instead of having some kind of magic or mana system, you have these little diamonds, and the diamonds represent uh, some kind of cost for your special attacks. Honestly, though, I really don't see what the benefit was of swapping out mana or magic for these diamonds. Like, sure, you get one extra diamond per turn, and I guess it is a way to sort of simplify the game a little bit, but it felt a little bit unnecessary, honestly. Uh, like, they're innovating in all of the wrong places. I guess you could argue that the other new gameplay feature that they have is uh, team attacks, where if you have one person on one side of an enemy and another person on another side of the enemy, then once one of them attacks, the other one will also get to attack. But this is very, very finicky. So you can only do this if they are on exact opposite sides of each other. So if you're facing north and you have somebody else facing east, for example, that's not going to be a team attack. It has to be you north, your friend south. And this can happen through ranged attacks as well, as long as your uh, team is in the exact right spot for it to happen. Enemies will also try to take advantage of the system as well. I'm not going to say that it's a bad addition to the combat system. 
but it's certainly not great. In fact, Disgaea was doing this like two decades ago in their first Disgaea game, and honestly, it was done a little bit better there because you could actually uh, organize some really cool looking attacks. You could uh, bunch up a bunch of people and get like these four, five, six man hits going. But here, it's so finicky that I really didn't find myself even using it that often. Like, sure, it works just fine, but it's not going to elevate the battle system for anybody. You're not going to be building teams around pincer attacks. It's just something that's going to happen naturally. But in the interest of not being too negative here, one thing that I find extremely cool about the game is that every single character has their own class. So you don't have generic swordsmen, generic archers that are joining your crew. Every single character in your party is a named character, and each of them has their own individual class that is only assigned to them, which I am so happy about. Uh, I know people enjoy systems where you sort of make your own characters and you can choose how many swordsmen you want and choose how many healers and choose how many mages you want, but I actually love the system better where I can actually uh, differentiate each character as their own type of character. You don't have two swordsmen and you don't have two lancers, it's just you have the main character who is a swordsman, you have his best friend who is a lancer, and everybody who comes into your party will be really unique like that. Building your characters has all of the hallmarks that you're probably used to. Of course, you can advance your class so that you get access to more abilities and stronger stats. You can uh, level up each of your individual stats through a kind of weird system where you have to give up very specific items in order to get very specific stat increases. Honestly, it's a little bit eh. They really didn't do too much to um, make leveling up your character feel that great, but the class system itself is so well done that, honestly, I can't really complain about it too much. Last and certainly not least, we have to talk about what I think is the selling point of the entire game, and that is the decision-based story branches. So here's how this goes down. Sometimes the game will ask you to make a very important decision that will branch how the story itself will progress. Now, normally you just sort of pick which option you like better through a menu system, but here they've actually done something really, really, really cool. You have seven teammates with you, and each of them has some kind of say in how you are going to decide what to do next. So... Uh, let's say, for example, at the beginning of the game, they actually give you a really big choice of which of two uh, continents to visit. Now, you yourself, as the player, probably have an idea of which one you want to go to, but it's majority rules. So, all of your teammates will have some idea of where they would personally like to go. Now, you as the player... If you have an idea of where you would like to go, have to go to the people that you know will not choose the option you want and find a way to convince them to take your uh, story path. And if you can, then you can get majority rule and you can go the way that you want to go. If you can't, then sometimes you won't be able to change the right minds and you will be stuck going down a different story path. This sounds a little bit annoying on paper, but honestly, the way it's implemented is extremely clever. I really, really liked this edition, even though it is a little bit easy. <laughs> like, uh, I really don't think many people are going to have that much trouble uh, getting your party to agree with what you want, because the options you have to select are normally pretty simple to spot, and some of them are actually gathered from talking to people in towns, and they're essentially, like, guaranteed you're going to be on my side in this decision. But honestly, it still feels like a pretty cool system. Because sometimes through talking to your party members, you yourself, again, as the player, will start to change your mind on what you'd like to do. Now, of course, the system isn't perfect, as I alluded to before. I think it could have been done a little bit more cleverly. So, for example, uh, if you happen to see that one of your party members doesn't like snakes, and you happen to see that one of the places you want to go to will have snakes, 
but they also say they want to go to that place, it would be kind of neat if the game rewarded you for paying attention to the smaller details and talk them out of it by pointing out the fact that the place you're going to has snakes and that they don't like snakes, so maybe they're not going to want to go. That would not only reward you for paying attention to the story and your character's dialogue, but it would feel a little bit more accomplishing to get them on your side rather than picking something a little bit more obvious. Rather than talking to somebody in town and getting the guaranteed you will be on my side button. Now, I will fully admit uh, I have not had the chance to completely finish the game. I am about 20 hours in. Admittedly, there's been a little bit of faffing about, a little bit of grinding, a little bit of uh, checking out some different parts of the game. But I think 20 hours in, I can give you a very honest assessment of how I feel about this game. The story itself does have a few twists and turns. There is a little bit of political intrigue if you're into that kind of thing. But... Overall, I would say don't go into this with your expectations set super high, and the game might just surprise you with how decent it is. So let's get to my thoughts here. Do I like this game? Yes. Did the game exceed my expectations, and would I recommend it? Also, yes. Is it a must-play for fans of the genre? Now, this is where I have been struggling the most while writing the script for this. I am very much stuck between a 6 and a 7, and normally when this happens, I always default to the lower number. It is up to the game to make me feel like the higher number is warranted, but in this case, I do think the game does deserve to be a 7. It does have a lot of very unique ideas that you will not find in other games, even though most of the game has been done better in previous same games of the same type. So for example, if you have not had the chance to play the original Final Fantasy Tactics, if you have not played uh, Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, I do recommend checking those out first. You really don't need to go out and spend full price on this game here if you haven't checked out some of the classics, because I do think you're going to get just as good, if not better, of an experience there. But if you have already experienced those games, or if you're just looking for something that evokes the spirit of older strategy RPGs, I do think you're going to find a lot of stuff here to really love. If you've had a chance to check out the game already, then feel free to tell me your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.